you know, the being the lost children of Israelite and all that BS comes from um, Christianity and the Bible and all of those kind of, cause to me, all of that stuff is man-made. I mean, when Baal came into being, which is the religion that the men created before they created Christianity and Islam, the men created Baal to get rid of the women's religions. Because at first, religion was something wholly done by the women. The men were out hunting, and they let the women do all of the spiritual work and all of that kind of stuff. But once they saw that the women had enormous power because people believed in them, and it was so like you could control thousands of people. Then the men wanted in on religion, and they came in and just started all the men's religions. And with the introduction of the men's religions came a whole lot of BS, frankly, about male greatness and male, um, you know, all of these different magical stories where everything is about men and the women can't be that, you know, a woman can no longer be a priestess or a priest or, you know, she has to only be a servant to the man and she's his rib, all of that nonsense. And so it's the same thing. They're romanticizing um, themselves as the Israelites. Now, what is true is that the original Jews, the original Hebrew people were black. And, of course, they came from Moro and Napata in what is now Sudan. Back then, that part of Sudan was called Ethiopia. But it is now Sudan. And so that's the Kushite area, and that's where um, the Hebrews originally came, even before the Falashas, um, which is a black Jewish nation. Um, that's true, that black people were the original Hebrews and Jews and kosher eating and all of that came from that region in Sudan. It all started there. So, you know, they can argue on that, but it's meaningless. It's meaningless, you know, and that while they're putting down these white Israelis, look at Michael Jackson. His children are as white as anybody. So what are you putting down when you're trying so hard to be white? Why are you so hateful of these people that you claim are this evil demon seed, and yet everything in your culture um, puts them on top and praises people who are white, are black versions of them, you know, looking white but calling it black and having all these white-looking children who look nothing like Africa, nothing like your ancestors, and then have the nerve after you do all that to ignore the plight of African people in those Arab countries and to go over there and try to identify with those Arab people who are calling you a bead inheriting and enslaving black people. You know, it's just, it's really just ignorance and a lack of knowledge about that region. And it's also insecurity, wanting to ID, identify yourself with something, anything. You know, it's like the Nubians were recently on New York Radio asking black Americans to stop abusing their name. You know, they are a real tribe who exists, and no, not everyone is Nubian. And they were like, can you please stop calling everybody a Nubian and calling yourself Nubian and really just respecting our name? We are the Nubians, no one else. And so it's that whole thing of looking for something to identify with because black American, their whole everything was stole from them. They don't know who they are in a way. And so all they know is they're African, but they don't know what kind of African. So they go and they grasp and all that kind of stuff. But they're from West Africa. They're from the kings of Sanhai and from the kings of uh, Central Africa Republic, from all of the great kingdoms that Egypt used to uh, pay them for their armies because a lot of the armies were shipped in from West Africa into Egypt to be part of their, uh, you know, you have all kind of people from there that were brought in because the West Africans, they had the iron ore first and the West Africans had, um, you know, it's like they're born buff. The men are born like football, you know, a baby. They already are born buff. And the women in West Africa are born with the, they have the famous Dukan cake, which is the buttocks. And, you know, they're famous for all that muscularity and everything. And so they were like the great warriors um, at one point, uh, you know, and their king sold them out by letting the white people come in. First they came in pretending they were friends. And then the kings were so greedy and just covetous and, 
you know, wanted to be like these outsiders, and they started selling our own people and copying these outsiders. And before you knew it, those outsiders owned our land, and all we had was a Bible, you know. And so, anyway, that's the whole real story of what happened to us. Wow, that was very informative. <laughs> um I'm definitely I'm going to have to go back to listen to what everything that you just said to replay it again because you covered a lot of different subjects and in the future I hope to have you back on my show at some point because I I there's like I have a list of questions that I wanted to ask you but I I could go a million places with everything that you just said because all of that information was just so astounding and but right. one of the things I wanted to ask you about was you mentioned identity and how black people from America, well, even though we're not really black, but we have lost our identity in the world. And I've always well, wanted to wait, ask, most black Americans are black. The majority of them, not all of them anymore, but the majority are still black people. Well, what I, you know I meant what by saying? that was right. But the um, I mean, okay. like, I don't understand the whole, the whole black thing and white thing comes from the caste system and where you are in society on a socioeconomical scale. That that's what I meant when I said that we're we're not really black. But what I wanted to ask you was, with you being born someone who was actually born in Africa, so called mm. Africa, what mm. do so called Africans call the continent of Africa? What is the actual name? Well, everybody has a different name. You know, the kiss of God's life is what Sudanese called it before outsiders came and told us what to call it. But different tribes have, I mean, literally, every tribe has a different name for it. You know what I mean? Right. Because and I, usually it just was called black. I mean, if you look at the names, like black people made the name Kemet, which is the original name of Egypt. And that name just seems black. And that's usually what they named stuff, was just black. <laughs> right. <laughs> because we were so black. You know, black people forget we were blacker than black. We were, you know, 3,000 years ago, all those people in the Middle East, all of them were black. You know, if black people would just use their minds and think. So to tell me, for instance, that Cleopatra couldn't have been dark skin because she was biracial. That doesn't mean shit if we're talking 3,000 years ago. The Greeks were black. So what does it matter her father was uh, a Greek? Her father could have been Greek and looked like Idris Elba 3,000 years ago. Exactly. You know, Absolutely. they don't yeah. think about that. You know what I mean? And so, right. you know, that needs to be, you know, uh, if you're really going to discuss Africa. But, you know, I anger a lot of people. They really have a problem with me because, of course, black Americans are very um, used to being the only voice of blackness. So it is daunting to them that now there's going to be black people from other parts of the world coming who maybe have different views or maybe have a different part of the story and now have to share the stage in telling our story. And so that now is becoming, you know... That's that's ridiculous. I mean, we we need all of the parts of the puzzle to to finish right. for, forming the puzzle. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's like, but you're not insecure about it. Some people are just insecure about it. You know what I mean? Right. Because like that's how I feel about religion too. You know, you have to study several different religions to get closer to the truth because the information has been fragmented. You know, right. you can't just just become a Christian and think you know everything or become a Muslim and think you know everything or, or any religion. It's like you have to really l learn information from everywhere because, you know, it's you're not going to find everything that you need in one place, just like you wouldn't go to school and go to just one class and think, that, right. you know, think that you're well-rounded when it comes to knowledge. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about was um, Egypt. You mentioned Egypt, and I, for what I understand, you're you're half Egyptian, is that correct? Right. Yes. Right now, every everybody is like obsessed with Egypt. It seems like, or at least fascinated with it. And in fact, in the '90s, there was this huge Afrocentric mu movement here in America, where you know people were walking around wearing dashikis and onks and 
people wear King Tut t-shirts to this day and whatnot. People still use the imagery. Do you feel that Americans are stealing from Egyptian or Kemetic culture by wearing this garb? Um, I just feel they're incredibly confused. You know, and of course, like, I'm half Egyptian and can't stand Egypt. So it's, it's really weird because when I came to America, I noticed that. I'm like, what is wrong with these people? But they, um, you know, it's, it's just like all the people in Japan that wear Afros and that they dress up like black Americans. It's a really big thing over there. And they don't have a clue about black Americans. They just see videos and pictures and stuff, and then they try to dress up as, you know, have you heard of that in Japan? Oh, yeah, I hear that the hip-hop movement and them imitating us right. is really big over there. It's, it's, right. like, a co- so, it's, like, it's like a costume but, that they put on. But at this, right, and at the same time, ask them something about black Americans. They have no clue. They don't know. They know only basic like they were slaves. And then they romanticize that. You know what I mean? They romanticize what that was like for black America. The story is totally different from what black Americans describe. Totally different. Because they romanticize it like you like it. Like you were so happy to be in a country with all this industry and wealth now and you were joyous and you had good relationships with master and had sex with master. And, you know, they make whole like pornos and stuff. Um, when I was over there, of like black Americans um, just enjoying life with their master, being their slaves, and you know, just a total fabrication of what it's actually like to be black in America. Right. No suffering, no real suffering, just, you know, they glamorize it and then they dress up like. And so it's the same thing with, you know, people wanting to dress up. You know, a lot of African Americans want something to relate to that's of greatness, but the sad thing is that they come from West African kingdoms and they aren't paying any homage to their actual ancestors. And so in Africa, that would be considered a huge affront. I mean, that's unforgivable. That's the lowest you can do is to not acknowledge your ancestors. So, but they, being black Americans, would never think of that. That, you know, I better get a t-shirt of, uh, Tinka Taka the second or Nzinga or, um, King Ja. They don't even think of that. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that, um, as far as so-called black Americans, one of, one of the, one of the, the things that disturbs me the most, because there's a lot of different, different things that I think that we could work on over here, but the whole not respecting your ancestors thing, that's like one of the biggest things to me because right. without them, we wouldn't be here. And they, a lot of right. them sacrificed a, a lot. And they went oh, through yeah. so much. And I, I think that representing for them and doing something right. for them is just so much more important than um, right. what a lot of people have in their minds. But um, exactly. I, I, I had a couple of questions about your writing. Uh-huh. Now, because I know that you're an avid writer, and what I wanted to know, seeing that I'm a writer myself, was do you have any particular writing rituals? Like, for example, do you write with a glass of wine or while listening to music? Do you have any sort of routine when you pin your switch? Right, yeah, I do. Um, I have a Barbie pin on my finger. That's the person I'm writing. You know, I take a Barbie pin and I, like, pull it open to where it, like, has two legs, and then I put it on my finger. And um, I act out a lot of the scenes that I'm writing. I act them out and write them. You know. So you, you and I don't. I don't get visitations, or you know, like somebody will say their ancestors came or the characters came to them. I see a movie in my head because that's what I originally wanted to do was make movies, and so I always see a movie playing of the story I'm going to write that becomes a novel, and. Um, those three things are pretty much the rituals I have with writing. Wow. So you you basically move your finger around on the paper as as if it's a person walking around to kind of get some movement. Going. Is that correct? Um, well, to feel the person. And I hold it in my hand as I'm typing. I'll pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. When I'm thinking, I'm holding it. 